<laughs> in this giant Over thing. Now. Well, it was the early 70s. People were into great excess. Hi, I'm George the Antique Nomad. Come with me as I wander the country in search of valuable vintage, amazing antiques, and cool collectibles. We'll buy, sell, and trade at antique malls, shops, and shows, estate sales, flea markets, thrift stores, anywhere people go to find really interesting things that just aren't made anymore. So come on, let's go. So I just walked in. I just finished the appraisal fair. I am here at Burning Bridge Antique Mall in Columbia, and I'm really excited because I get to shop with some familiar people. And here they are. And if you don't know who they are, well, it says so right there. They say Tom Selleck could not walk down a staircase without that holding the thing, and he'd be in these rolls, and they'd be like, cut, you can't touch the thing. And he's like, I'll fall down. So I'm just like, okay, if Tom Selleck has to use the rail, so do I. <laughs> okay, I want to see what a watch riot is like. It's interesting to see this here because I figured that anything to do with timepieces might be expensive or hard to find in Columbia because of the National Association of Watch and Clock Collectors being here. This one is priced at 145, which really isn't too bad at all. I'd say it's right out of the 70s, something hand painted. And look at that, ladies and men's LCD quartz watches. Well, yes, that's right, quartz was a new thing. Two for ten. This little showcase has some fun things, including hunter's licenses from Pennsylvania. Display on middle of back, and yes, you had to because. You had to be registered with the state to go hunting then, and there were your little license plates. Most of those were thrown away, so they're hard to find. There's a Sultana peanut butter tin. It's one you see a little more often, but any peanut butter tin is going to be worth $40 or $50 just right out the door, and that one is $48. Ooh, I like the color of that one. I've seen that piece a lot, but I've never seen it in that shade. Oh, that's really pretty. That's earth wrap. Wow. Yeah, I've never seen that. Before. That's awesome. I've never seen the pillar candle. That is so cool. That's intense. It really is. And I always like the white background because you get the wrap better on it. The brown, it to me, it just sort of gets lost. And it's $75. That seems good. <laughs> In this giant thing. Well, it was the early 70s. People were into great excess. <laughs> Well, Jocelyn, of course, comes here fairly often because it's in her area. So she looks through this because she said this is one of her favorite little booths to shop. And I can see why, because I see some good prices on some things, particularly the Grape Wall Pocket. I think this one's by Walker Potteries. It may not say so, but I believe it was out of Los Angeles. They were aping what Treasure Craft was doing about that time, around 1950. It's certainly a good price for $12. Here's another line of gas station glasses given away at this case in Phillips 66. I like that design. 20 bucks for the set of four. It's interesting to know where they came from. Let's see if we can see who made it for them. It's upside down here, but it was Anchor Hawking in Lancaster, Ohio. Here's a beautiful piece of pottery. This is a big oil jar, as they called them. They were very popular to put at the entrance of houses. This one says it is Falls Graph. And because it's false graph, it's only $275. If it was Bauer from California, it might be twice that price or more. False graph's a relatively good deal on some of these older large pieces because it's a company that was in business until late, so the collectors didn't really catch on to it because it was still being made. And then I really like this Sunshine Biscuits display. This is out of a 1920s or 30s store. The Loose Wilds Biscuit Company, I always thought that was a funny name. That's a really cool display. I don't see a price on it, which is a shame because I certainly would be interested in it if there was. Yes, indeed, this was a look that was popular at one time in country decorating. This is early 60s. Will it ever be popular again? I don't know that it will. The hard rock maple is really good quality, but this upholstery was sort of a modernized color revival of a lot of various old forms and figures that I'm not sure people understand nowadays. It's priced at 65. 
On the other hand, these little tables do very well. This one's 135 with the nice enamel top that pulls out for extra utility. And this one's great because it's got patterning on the top. It might sound strange, but I learned from Cat the Nurse Flipper to look for even these plastic things that advertise various medicines because they're not allowed to do this sort of swag anymore. So as a result, some of these are kind of popular and pricey. This one's $25. What'd you find? Oh, I like the cut work. Yeah. Yeah, somebody did a lot of work on those for $12 each. I mean, it's amazing when you think about the amount of time that went into something like that, and you're like, how could it be $12? It's really like funny. 30 minutes of someone's labor, and you know they spent hours on it. Yeah, the colors are great. That's the corner booth that you were just in. Oh, okay. It sort of had a... Isn't it more like boho stuff over here? Kind of, she has like a different... Well, originally she was doing this as primitive, but it looks like she kind of... Blend it in. Yeah. These, I think, are, yep, Treasure Craft Paradise. They did in the late 80s, and when I asked the guy, yeah, they're completely dated looking now, but they were very, very current in, like, 1989, and I asked, uh, when I asked the guy why they made this line, he was like, well, we were having a party, and we thought they would look cool, so I <laughs> authorized them to make this line so I'd have dishes, and I'm like, wow, you must have been doing really well. He's like, yeah, it wasn't always about market research. It was just whatever we wanted. These lamps are a lot of fun. I like the jeweling. And they have this Moroccan style with the filigree work. Two seventy-five for the pair. Here's something that I have not seen before. It's penguins on a 1930s dresser box. It might be English because a lot of the weird deco stuff that I haven't seen before in glass turns out to be English, but it's just really different. It's got the midnight sun, which of course, I guess must be in Antarctica in winter time down there. I think it's really cool and I would buy it if it didn't have that darn chip I just saw there because it's only $16, but I don't like to buy as is. I really like these leaf tables. I have a leaf lamp, or palmate lamp that would go well with these, that's painted this same shade of green right out of the 50s. They have some rust. They're priced at $50 each. That's more than I can pay for resale, but they sure are cute. This is a really cool Santa head candy mold, priced at $90. Looks like it's from the 1950s, and you could have had Oh, what, a couple of dozen Santas, but I just love the way they repeat. That would be really fun in a Christmas display. It's a grease, yeah, it's one of those old grease guns, yeah. That's pretty cool. So chassis lubrication, and this is marked Lincoln, but I don't think it's the Lincoln car. I think it's just Lincoln must have been the company that made this. This is priced at five ninety five, dollars and yeah, believe it or not, people will pay that price for these big old grease guns. I see round ones usually, but this one's a generation earlier out of the 30s or 40s. So to me, that seems like a reasonable price for what it is if you're a gas and oil person. <laughs> we are having too much fun. We are not sure what this thing is doing to this chicken, but there is some conjuring of something going on there. The mannequin is kind of cool for 195 but he looks really seriously intent on eating that cookie jar. <laughs> Fly tying kits can be worth money because people who fish spend where their passions are and tying flies is a huge thing. I know people who have really advanced setups for fly tying and some of the old tied flies can be worth a bunch of money too. This would have been a starter kit for a beginner about 1960 and this one is priced only at $25 so let's see how complete it is well it seems like it's got a lot of the feathers and a lot of the materials some of the wax has been used it looks fairly complete I feel like that's probably a pretty decent price for that and I'm kind of tempted by it I was just offered one of these the other day but the one I was offered was not as complete as this. This is an Underwood standard but it's a very wide, wide carriage and that was deliberate for typing on legal documents and 
plat maps and things where you had to be able to get a larger piece of paper in. So these are fairly hard to find because they were mainly used institutionally. This one is priced at 145, which seems reasonable for what it is. I like the old scale with the red paint from the 1920s. This looks like a candy store scale, except that it's got the big weights on it. So it may have been for something heavier. It's nice that it has the weights and the price is 75, which is good. And then we have the Scotty, the Scotty doorstop is 110. Oh yeah, that is really cool. So Dagny has found these really great flapper fans. Ooh, for Frederick's Vitatonic Waves. So that's when they had those crazy, um, I don't know if you've ever seen the permanent wave yeah, machines yes, where it's yes, like Medusa with all, yeah. Of, yeah, and they plug it in. Yeah, so that's what that's for. That's, yep, she was, hello everybody. Hello everybody, here's my legs. <laughs> that's very cute. <laughs> legs sell, right? Hair products. <laughs> yes, exactly, because legs and hair, right? <laughs> I just sold a piece of Cambridge Blue Caprice, and here it is in the Alpine form. Alpine meant that they actually put it in an acid bath and satinized part of the design so that it would come out more three-dimensionally. It's only $35. There was a time that would have sold for twice that, and elegant depression glass this color still seems to sell well. Maybe not for the prices of old, but there are customers for it. So if you see this color, this is something to look for. Then look for fire polishing and other indications of quality. Here's the old Elks Creed. This is something you had to agree to to be a member of the Elks. This one is from 1921 in the gilded metal with the relief. Very pretty, priced at $70. That actually is not a bad price if you collect fraternal organization stuff, especially because it is 15% off. They're having a sale. You will see this powder box that says Ambush a lot. It was originally part of this set with the spray cologne. Seeing the whole set together is kind of unusual. I wish I could see the price, but it is on the back. This is neat. It's not some important artist. It's sort of primitive. The frame's worn, but it's painted on tin, and I find that very likable about it. You can hear it when I tap on it. I wouldn't do that if the painting was in better condition, of course, because you don't want to accidentally scrape the paint or get the oil from your fingers in it. But since this one is in the condition it's in, I thought it was safe to do that just to show you. When I started in the business, I worked with a company that came to this part of the country and they bought all sorts of fret fretwork and architectural pieces like this. Now I'm looking at these and these appear that they are newer cutouts to have the look of old. So this is something that you can buy if you are wanting this look and cannot find old. Old can be far, hard to find, but they do have a lot of old pieces in here as well. I like these shutters with the cutouts. Not a lot of people use shutters anymore, so they don't sell like they used to, but they can be useful for a lot of other things repurposing. These are Dutch cookie molds. They're very large. That would be one heck of a cookie. They're hand carved and they're only $32 each. I think those are pretty saleable really to somebody who was interested in hanging them on the wall. Let's see what the one in the back. Oh, there's four of them. Interesting. Well, let's see if any of these are fun enough designs that they might be worth picking up and trying to get 65 for them. It's interesting to me because they're primitivists, and yet they have a little bit of a Bjorn Vindblad aspect because of the European design and that whimsy, so they're fun. You know how I'm fond of saying have the best one, the cheapest one, or the only one? Well, if I buy one of these, I will have the only one in all likelihood because you just don't see these very much, and so I could take this to a show or somewhere and probably have the only one. There's also a nice Eastlake mirror behind it for only $45. There's certainly room in some of these prices. They're larger items, so there is the question of where to display them and how. All right, we are wading into the showcase area, and I know a lot of folks say they're afraid to shop in showcases, and I understand why it can be overwhelming and you can't necessarily just touch the thing. But you can take a look really quickly and see if there's anything that jumps out as being not like the other stuff in there if you're not sure what else to do. This one seems pretty thematic. I remember these XCH-62 helicopters were still taking off and landing when I was a very little kid and we lived next to the largest helicopter base in the world at the time. 
in Southern California. These are fun with the racing forms. Got some Stangle Ducks, a whole case full of tin types and daguerreotypes and ambrotypes. It used to be you saw cases full of these in the antique stores and a lot of them have gone into collections so you don't really run into big collections like this so much. I saw Ken Dahl at the appraisal fair today. He did not have his original box. This is the 1961 Ken, the very first one with the blonde hair. They're asking 125 for the whole set. If it was Barbie, that'd be a no brainer, but Ken is a much narrower audience. The red exit ball is a harder color to find. I made Chicago famous. That's so funny. That little pig we had a Chicago Stockyards pig bank in the appraisal fair today. It's so funny how you will find something you haven't seen and then immediately see another one in this business. These were Model T lamps. When you see these lanterns, this is what they looked like. Cars did not have headlights at first because no one had thought of cars, let alone driving at night. At one of the antique malls that we stopped at. Oh, really? It was $39. Wow. Oh my gosh, that's great. Very minimal scratching. Oh, that's really cool. I love Dorothy Thor. I didn't realize she did a coil no, that's why I as a letter that holder. Here, that's yeah. really awesome, actually. Yeah, I love her designs, but I didn't really think of her as someone who worked in Lucite, so I guess I have more to learn. Oh, yeah. 95 yeah. bucks. This is neat. This is a etched tin comb and brush holder. You see the little scratchy surfaces, and you could put matches in there as well, but usually they were for a comb and a brush and your toiletries. And it's very neat. I like the two messenger boys on the bikes in the picture. $44 seems like a pretty good price for that. We see this sort of thing and you notice it also has comb and brush written on the bottom in case you weren't sure what it was for. We see these sorts of things in Pennsylvania because it's an older place and so people were living here at this time. When I go out west and take things like this, people are fascinated because they just haven't seen them out there much. The Little John Radio, that is a very classy item. This is wonderful kitsch from the 1960s. It's a little transistor radio. They usually sell for over $50. This one, well, the tag is flipped, so I can't tell you what they're asking for that one. Look at this turquoise coral and claw bolo. $6.75, that is just a huge hunk of silver. They have some really nice Hopi and Navajo jewelry here and some really large pieces, which are very impressive. $500 on this big piece with the coral on top and bottom and the multiple turquoise, the raw turquoise. I personally like it when they don't polish the turquoise out because it's a more natural look. But sometimes, like the butterfly that's $250, that cuff, well, that one, it definitely had to be polished out to make the look. So there's lots of different styles within styles of Navajo. And then of course we have the Hopi here with the Eye of God, this little cuff, which appears to be priced also at $250. Here is one of the biggest grinding wheels that you're going to see from a store, Enterprise Manufacturing, out of Philadelphia, USA. And I wonder what they've got on this. The electric one here is $350. That is about the going rate. And on this big one, I imagine it could be closer to five. And it is, oh no, it's over a thousand. And they may be right. I haven't seen one that size. Some really cute barber chairs, $495. Love that color. I sold my old, old barber chair for a thousand. Crystal Mermaid is great. It says it's Fostoria, and that may be true. It might be late production that I'm not familiar with. I did not know Levitt's Furniture was around long enough to have given out these advertising bowls back in the 1930s. I get a kick out of that. I think of Levitt's Furniture as being stuff from the 70s and 80s that was the generic stuff you just bought when you needed something to fill the house. This is British Overseas Airways, BOAC. They're not in business anymore. And that is priced at 23 which is actually pretty cheap for that ashtray, at least if you're an aviation collector, I know the av aviation collectors in Seattle pay about 40 to 45 for those. Brad Keeler made this very cute standing dough, and Brad Keeler is a good name in ceramics. There is the label. Came out of California. This is Bambi-esque. It's $40, which is a pretty good price. 
I've certainly seen it for more in Los Angeles where it's better understood. This is also from California. Maddox of California made the TV lamp with the double swans. And then I'd like to show these because these are J.B. Hirsch. Now one of them is missing a hand, so because of that it would not be something to buy, but this Chinese figure in the Chinese red with the chopstick shows you what they're supposed to look like with all their fittings. J.B. Hirsch was well known for these kinds of figures in the 1920s and 30s, and a lot of them were done as bookends. They have $100 on this because of it being as is, but it definitely would be more if it was in better shape. So while you're at it, if you would click that thumbs up to like this video, that'd be great. And if you're not subscribed, please do. We have a lot of people who are not subscribers and it doesn't cost you anything, but if you subscribe, then we can let you know when future videos are happening. All you'll have to do is click that bell to be reminded. This cast plaster piece is fun with the chieftain laying back. These Playboy tankards at $12 each are actually a pretty good deal. I sell them for more now. It's so crazy. I had never seen this bank, which was a souvenir of the Chicago stockyards until the appraisal fair this afternoon. Never saw one before. Here is one for sale for $75. This is really cool with the contrast. That is a fallow deer by Wedgwood from 1927, and it's not a piece that they did very long. And that's the reason that, and it doesn't look like Wedgwood either. You don't think of Wedgwood being white, but they did do a lot of white wear. This is priced at $225. John Smeeping was the designer. I love railroad china, and this is something that is worth looking for. Some of them are usual patterns like this one, but it's Mark Pullman. So that's an India tree. You would have seen a lot of restaurants use that. It wasn't just limited to railroad use, but the Pullman company put it in some of their cars. Delaware and Hudson. This one with the various flowers of the various places that this line ran, which I think is Missouri Pacific. Pennsylvania Railroad, which is popular around here because we're in Pennsylvania. I also like the desk caddy. I've sold those from various railroad companies. There are still a lot of people who collect railroad related items. And yes, it is a lot to do with where you are. So there's a lot of Pennsylvania here that's priced higher because we're in Pennsylvania. The Traveler Egg Cup from the Milwaukee Road, and it is priced at $90 because the people who know this stuff they know it. It's well chronicled. There's good books about it, but you will still, if you take time with those books, you will find pieces occasionally that are railroad patterns that are not marked with the railroad name, and that's where you can make unexpected profits, folks. This regulator clock is a little more unusual. It dates to about 1900. It says Regulator A on the front. It's priced at 175 which is a pretty good deal. Regulator clocks do still sell, but what's special about this one is it has the calendar dial. So the red arrow is not the second hand, it actually points to what day of the month this is. Now the black composition dolls should not be something that would be a problem to sell on eBay because they're not trying to depict these in some sort of a caricature sense. However, with eBay you have to be really careful. I recommend based on my unfortunate experience that you do not use the words black Americana when listing such things because that will trigger eBay. And Nowadays, it's not so much about what you do or what's in your heart. It's about what triggers people that seems to be of importance. Battery testers are not the easiest thing to sell because they are for batteries that we don't really use anymore, but they have a good look. That's why it's $69 as opposed to a store display that might be twice that much if it was just shelves and cubby holes. Here's a bunch of the silver fade in a holder, and they've got 35 on that set. Two Dumbos for $15 seems like a good price. He's a little rubbed on his head though, unfortunately. Otherwise I would have probably taken that pair for that. All right, let's see what they're asking for bittersweet because we know these have really gotten popular. They are asking 230 for the one on the left and 125 for the one on the right. I have to say the one on the right, definitely a better value for money in my opinion, but not everybody wants the ewer shape. I think they're really fun and it breaks up the swung vases in a way that if you have a bunch in the line, makes them more interesting to me. Down on the bottom shelf here, this is a Blinko piece. 
Blanco did these early in the 50s. This was a Winslow Anderson design when they were doing this sort of drinkware. The only problem is that they tended to have trouble with the way they adhered their handles. And this one has a crack where the handle was adhered. So you do want to be careful on pieces by Blanco that you check the condition of the handle, make sure it's well joined, especially for something like this where you'd actually be using the handle. Not only is this a nice looking circa 1930 stand up stereo with these nice doors that shut so that you don't have to see the grill if you don't want to, just like the way people have cabinets for TV so you can't see them, but it also has its original paperwork. It's for those who know and love finer things. This is going to be a Kennedy from about 1930. And they're talking about their nearly two decades of radio experience, which at that point was all anybody had. And it says that it does work. And it's priced at four fifty. Yes, I thought this was a more recent piece. This is from the Victoria and Albert Museum. Museum reproductions are perfectly fine. And they're very good about marking things because they don't want to mislead the public. It's just they're not going to be worth a ton of money later. Now, this could be Andrea by Sedeck, or it could be Heron, but with the hand-painted mark, I think that's an Andrea piece. And yes, indeed, someone put Sedeck green fishnet. But they were copying the fishnet of Heron when they made those. <laughs> I like this crazy, stupid owl hanging. That's just great with the just Google eyes. Did they really? They, did. they walked by, by us, and I'm like, Ooh. <laughs> wow. Is that, oh no, purple velvet drawstring purse is 25. Oh, this is 45. Okay. Yeah. I was going to say it's $25. Get it. But it's $45. Well, thank you all. And I will see you again from somewhere fun in the antique and vintage community doing something else cool with some other great people, hopefully in the very new future. In the meantime, I'm George the Antique Nomad. Please do Check that social media and those links in the description because there's lots of other fun things that we do on this channel and you can find out all about them. Bye for now. Thanks for joining me again in the fun and fascinating antique community here where online meets the real world. Please click the subscribe button below, click the bell to be notified when new videos upload, leave a comment below and hit thumbs up to like this video. Links to our online social media and our items for sale are in the description. This is George at the Antique Nomad. Bye for now. <laughs>